I absolutely hate how problematic imposter syndrome has become with software engineers these days. So let's try to talk about it. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Green Developer channel. Today I want to talk about something that kind of hits close to home and I'm sure hits close to home to a lot of people out there that are making their first steps in the field of software engineering and software development. I want to talk about imposter syndrome or that feeling of guilt of being inadequate to do the job that you're tasked with doing. Something that most junior developer will kind of encounter within their first few days or weeks or months of working in the field of software engineering. You spent all that time, you know, working on personal projects, learning the basics, practicing whatever matters to you in regards to software engineering, and within the first few days or weeks or first few tasks that you're going to get assigned as a developer, you might hit a wall and realize that all the stuff that you've been doing before actually doesn't really prepare you for the specific task that you have to do right now. You might have heard a little bit about what you're supposed to do, or you might have no idea at all. but Whatever happens at that point is that a lot of people start thinking that maybe they were a little bit too optimistic with selling their skills when they were hired for that job. Or maybe they focused on the wrong thing when they were trying to learn the basics and something they kind of missed out on and now they kind of feel stuck feeling that they weren't meant to take that job in the first place and maybe you know, people have too much expectations of what they can do. But let's try to tackle this because it's a totally normal feeling to have and it's a totally normal situation to be put in as a software developer. And the sooner you realize that, the sooner you're going to be able to fade away from feeling like you have that so-called imposter syndrome and actually just do the job and realize that it's normal to feel that way. So here's the thing. Um, software engineering and development and programming and whatever else related to technology is a very, very big and wide subject. There is a lot of stuff to understand if you want to know everything, so much so that there's nobody in the world that knows everything about programming. There's probably no one in the world that even knows everything about the subfield of programming they're in. Which means no matter how much you prepare or how much you try to learn about a subject, even a specific field of software engineering, there's always going to be some things that you just plain don't know about and that's okay. And that's never going to change because of the fact that this field is so rapidly changing all the time. Look at a web developer from 2000 or from 2010. Within the span of a career that person would have to learn so much new stuff to just keep up with what's happening. And that doesn't mean that at any point during their career they were inadequate or, you know, unable to fulfill the role that they had at a company working as a web developer. Whatever you're learning this year to, you know, get a job in software engineering or whatever is probably not going to be something you're going to be using that much by the time you finish your career if you stay in software engineering for the whole part of it. And that's where you kind of have to draw the line as to what your goal and your role is as a software developer and engineer. Your goal is not to know everything about a technology and all the, you know, tiny little details to make a project come to life. Most of your role is just to be able to learn that stuff when it comes up and have the tools to just apply it and learn it when it matters. Now, of course, if you're applying for something like a tech lead position or something like that, you might have to have a lot more specific knowledge about the technology stack that you're gonna be working on. Even so, these people are gonna run into issues that they don't know that much about and they just have to learn on the spot. It's okay to run into walls as a junior developer. It's gonna come up a lot and you just kinda have to learn to deal with it. That feeling of having to learn new stuff and not knowing exactly how to do something as soon as you see the problem arise is gonna keep up all the way through your career, but obviously it's gonna be a lot more present as a junior developer and that's okay, that's expected of you. So what you wanna be working on as a junior is not to showcase what you already know. It's great if you already know how to do a couple of things that you might run into in your work day, but what you wanna be focusing on more is how to tackle new issues and how to develop that skill set of figuring out how to do new things that you have never done before. Because ultimately, that's what's going to bring you forward the most in your job. And that's what's going to make you reliable for years to come as a developer as you kind of get better and better at tackling new issues and figuring out new technology stacks and whatnot. Think about it this way. This is even reflected in how people conduct interviews these days. 
Now there's a whole lot of issues that I could be talking about regarding these type of interviews and that maybe is a subject for a whole nother video but the fact of the matter is most of these big companies that nowadays do algorithmic questions and data structure questions that might not even have that much related to what you're actually going to be doing when you actually work at that place are there for a reason. They're just trying to figure out the critical thinking and the problem solving mindset of the people they're going to be hiring. They're not really trying to test to see if you have all the specific knowledge of all the details of how a technology stack works to see if you're going to be able to apply it without using Google once you sit down at your desk at your first day of work. What they're trying to figure out is if you're going to be able to, you know, figure out the new problems that you've never seen before using that critical thinking that you're showcasing within your interview. Now, like I said, there is a bit of issues like that because people use those big green books like I have in my shelf to kind of prepare for those and it maybe kind of skews the result and the idea behind that process. Disregarding the whole interview process, the whole point I'm trying to put across is that even through the interview process, you can see that as a junior developer, they're not even trying to see how much you know about a specific technology stack. They're just trying to figure out if you're good at figuring out new issues and new problems. And so there's no reason to feel ashamed of not knowing something when they hire you and you sit down at your desk to work the first day. You're going to be there to try to figure out new problems all the time. And that's what's expected of you. So anyway, I hope this was helpful a little bit at least. I know that whole imposter syndrome thing and the feeling of not knowing enough to do the job you're tasked with is a really big problem in our field. And so I thought it was really important to, you know, take a bit of my time to try to share it and hopefully make it a little bit better for the few people that are going to see this video. All right. So like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. And if you want to see more content, make sure to hit subscribe and that bell to be notified. It helps me a lot if you do those two things. I also have a Patreon if you would like to support these videos that way, where you can get access to a couple exclusive things like early access to my videos and other exclusive content. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all next week. And until then, take care.